I'm Paul Bennett at Shoestring Shipyard here in Millbridge, Maine. We're located along Maine's Bowl Coast, not very far from the U.S. Canadian border. As you can see, I'm only putting one section at a time on. And the reason why I'm doing it this way is because, of course, I'm working all by myself. I don't have any help. I don't have other hands. So this is an effective way to apply glass to the hull, just uh, one piece at a time, because the polyester resin that I'm using does set up fairly quick and you don't have a lot of time to work with it. And once you get the glass down, if you do have a bubble or you get a wrinkle where the cloth bumps up, you don't want to try to move this cloth around very much because when you do, it just matters get worse. So the thing to do is you just do the best you can while you're working with it. You don't want to waste time because the clock is ticking on that resin. If you do have a problem, I do have a little wrinkle, you can't see it in the camera probably, but I can go back and I can cut that out later. It's not a big deal, I can fix it very easily. So I'm not going to worry about that one little piece right there, I'll just put a little patch on it. But the rest of it is coming out pretty good so far. I don't have any air bubbles except for this one little ridge right here where the cloth got bunched up a little and didn't smooth out nice. That's no big deal. It's repairable. Certainly I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to apply the fiberglass cloth on the hull over the entire boat just like this, this entire method. And each time I put a new piece on it's going to slightly overlap the other piece. The thing with polyester resin and fiberglass is you want to try to work quickly but efficiently, at least as much as possible. Because the more efficient you are at doing this, and a little bubble here, a little wrinkle here, I can get down with this roller. But the better, the better you are, the more efficient you are at doing this, the less work you have later on after it cures. You, you won't be as much uh, going over it. Less repair work. It's a little bit difficult when you're doing a vertical surface. I didn't have this pulled out enough. Now that it's on there, it's hard to move. That's because I made a little mistake in doing this, trying to rush and do it in front of the camera too. It's nice having a scraper. This is just an auto body uh, filler type trowel, but it's nice because it, it helps you smooth out the fiberglass cloth. It can save you a lot of headaches. Remember that I'm using a laminating resin, it has no wax. So the surface is already a little bit on the tacky side, it's not fully cured. And that helps too when you're applying the cloth. Helps the cloth to stick a little bit. And I'm getting a few bobbles here because, again, I don't have any help, I'm trying to do this by myself. But it's all repairable. I also have to say that Although I've done this countless times over the years on many, many boats, I have to say that this is probably my least favorite job in boat building. I really hate working with resins and fiberglass and all that. It's not my 
not my thing. I just do it because it's a necessary evil to help protect the, the wood. Gives it a little bit better abrasion resistance and it'll take a better paint finish. Not that I, not that I intend to put a yacht finish on this, uh, far from it. Uh, a workboat finish is fine for me. So this is my boat and it's not for a client. If it was, it'd be a whole different, a whole different way of doing this. So there's the first piece. As I said, this method is called postage stamping. It's now the following day <clears throat> from when I applied this fiberglass cloth in the scene that you just witnessed a little earlier. <clears throat> and if you'll recall, I had a bit of a ripple in the cloth here, which a little bit of a a little bit of an air pocket underneath it, but not much. It's pretty much just excess fiberglass, but even so, this can't stay like that. You will also recall that I'm using a laminating resin, which means it doesn't have any wax in it, and so it doesn't set up completely. It does cure, but it stays a bit tacky. If I try to sand this off, I'm just going to gunk up the sandpaper and waste it, and sandpaper is expensive. Not to mention the fact that I'm going to get all kinds of dust in the air and everything else. It has to be cleaned up and get it off the surface. But if I take a very sharp wood chisel, I can just, I can just shave it right off. Just work at it carefully. And I'm going to do a little bit of repair. I'll just take a little bit of cloth and go over this with some resin later. But I can just shave it off. And I don't need a hammer. I can do this by hand. I just have to take my time. I don't want to I don't want to tear the cloth off the entire boat hull surface around here just where that just where that little ripple was. Once I get the main part of it off, I can just work at a little bit of time right around the edges. The epoxy, even though it's still tacky, it's cured enough where it's bonded around the fiberglass cloth and it allows a sharp chisel to just shave it, cut it right off. Now what I've done is I've taken that off. I now have a nice surface. And now I'm at the point Brought it all down, I've fared it, and I can take a little bit of little cloth here with a little resin, or I can take some resin with some uh, fiberglass fibers mixed in with it and just put a little patch on there and she'll be good to go. All the rest, wherever I have an air bubble, I can do this similar thing and I didn't have to listen to any noise, I'm not breathing any dust. I don't have dust all over the place. And this also went a lot faster than if I use sandpaper because I'd simply be clogging it up and having to change the paper on the sander. This is a, a good way to repair such mistakes.
since all my polyester resin happens to be laminating resin, meaning it has no wax in it, now that I want to start putting the finish coats on, I have to add wax. And it's roughly two teaspoons per quart of wax is what you is the amount of wax that I add. But I'm mixing up just a little over half a quart or 500 milliliters. So I'll do one teaspoon and I'll add just a little bit extra, maybe an eighth to compensate and maybe a little more than that. And that should be enough. And once the wax is in there you really have to mix it into the resin thoroughly. Although right now I have not added the MEKP catalyst yet so I'm not too worried about it clicking off on me. So I have plenty of time to get this well mixed. And of course you can buy your polyester resin with the wax already in it. And that's just a lot of times they'll just call it finishing resin. And the type of polyester resin you might buy at a big box store is usually finishing resin and does have the wax in it. Uh, I haven't, I've never seen them sell the laminating resin without the wax. It's the same polyester resin, it's just the difference between no wax and having wax. So now this will have wax and when I put the catalyst in it and mix it up, I can start rolling it on the hull. And that will, right now, the resin that's on it is set up, but it's very tacky, kind of gummy-like. And it won't get hot until I apply this coat of resin with the wax in it. Should then get hard, and then I can go ahead and do any sanding I want to do without uh, really clogging up my sandpaper. It will, it'll gum up a little bit, but not as bad. So there's my wax. I'm just going to add the MEKP, start rolling it on. Now this polyester resin with wax in it is going to be coated over the entire hull. And it's important to keep a wet edge because uh, it does have the wax in it. And once it sets up, you can't put resin over it until you've either uh, you've got to wipe down the wax, de-wax it, or you have to sand it off. Usually it's best to wipe it off first with a de-waxer and, uh, and then go ahead and do your sanding afterwards. So I have to work very quickly. I'm not going to film the whole entire thing, but uh, you get the idea. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?